can I write off your services? Like, how does that work? Oh, yeah. So every single year, like to be successful, you literally have to always constantly be learning, constantly investing in yourself. So every single year, every single coach, every single course that you're purchasing, every single year you can write them off. I've got a special surprise for you today. And I think uh, I came in uh, from Orlando last week and I was like, oh, I'm so excited. I'm going to be bringing <laughs> on a CPA. Knows her shit can, can uh, help us keep a lot of our money because we are in tax season right now. It's April. Yeah, and sure are. <laughs> uh, everybody, everybody was like talking about how much they pay and all this stuff. And I'm like, hold on. All <laughs> these W2 people and all these just, there's just obviously not a lot of education. And then I need to learn too. Yeah. I, you know, I mean. We got to keep our money. So I found Tala here and I say, I'm saying that right. Correct. Tala. Tala. Yeah. <laughs> Tala. Yeah. Yeah. And it's spelled like T O L A, but I'm going to be sure and give you all of her social media handles, uh, her, her link for her website. She takes inquiries. I think she's got openings right now, but anyway, we're going to get into it. If you're watching this live, you've got questions, look, put it in the comments. Um, and then obviously this is going to be on the podcast and YouTube and everything. So welcome, welcome Tala. Thanks for, for gracing us with your, your badassness. <laughs> yeah, of course. Thanks so much for having me. I'm loving this opportunity. I can't wait to share some gems with you guys. Dude, I'm so excited because I love money. Like I love money. It's so much fun. And I feel like any, it is very intimidating, dude, like the uh, IRS, you know, and yeah. you say you work for the IRS, right? Yep. I used to be on the other side. <laughs> dude. So let me tell you a little bit about her personally. So she's got two little boys, right? Two little boys. Yeah. And they're yeah, close in age. Cool. And she kind of, how old are they? So my oldest is about to be four next month. And then my little guy's one. <laughs> oh, Lord. So she's in it, y'all. She's in it. So, yeah, she gets uh, it. I love it. I love that uh, when I find the working, the working moms and just, and I can tell when I talked on the phone with her, I was like, girl, I can tell you are holding back. She's got this energy, y'all, of like this. She definitely has compassion. She wants to help us. But it's almost like she's got this no you are, she's got, she goes to bat for us and you, she's got that energy. And so I, I'm excited to get it. Let's just get straight into it. All right. Good. So what is it that you would say you specialize in? Yeah. So pretty much I specialize in helping put money back into business owners pockets. Right. So one of the biggest expenses that I always say that we have, you know, yes, mortgage and rent are definitely hefty, but how much you pay in taxes is right up there with that cost. And instead of giving the money to the IRS and literally open up your wallet and say, here, IRS, take all my hard-earned money, literally the tax law is made to actually help business owners actually, believe it or not, to actually put money back into their pocket and reinvest it, you know, whether it comes into reinvesting into your business, into other investments, or if you just want to go on a great bomb family vacation, such as yourself, you know, going to Florida recently. <laughs> what are the, the perks or pros and cons of having a S-Corp, C-Corp, and LLC in your mind? Here's the thing. When you first start up a business, essentially, if you're a sole proprietor, you're going to be taxed the most out of everybody. So when you know you go on irs.gov, you go on the EIN website, and you register your business as an LLC, your automatic tax designation is going to be on a Schedule C. Now, when you're on the Schedule C, you're pretty much in the same ballpark with about pretty much around 80% of people that file taxes. 80 to 90% of people file a Schedule C, sole proprietor, and they're overpaying on taxes. So I love the S Corp and the C Corp designation because as long as you're making money, you're definitely going to be able to have a lot more opportunities to help save on taxes. So when it comes to being an LLC, an LLC is actually a legal designation, not a tax one. So here a lot of people say, hey, I'm taxed as an LLC. That's false. A LLC is a limited liability company. So you actually are having protection as far as legally in your company. But an LLC can be taxed as a partnership. It can be taxed as the S Corp. It can be taxed as a sole proprietorship on a Schedule C. Okay. So you're saying you could have both. Yeah. So an LLC, yep. An LLC can be an S Corp. An LLC can be a partnership. An LLC can be a sole proprietorship on a Schedule C. Gotcha. Because you know, like when you when you sign up to get a business, you're you're offered those three things. Everybody's like, oh, which one do I do? My tax ladies always said, um, you know, S corps is the way to go. You, there's something about you can get more write offs. Can you elaborate yeah. on that? Yep, you can definitely leverage your tax um, write offs better with the S corp. So one example is, you know, business owners such as yourself and myself. You know, you might 
have a home office, right? Um, that's something that actually all designations can take off a home office. But the extra benefit with the S Corp is that even if you, you're by yourself as far as in your home and your business, you can actually rent out your entire home to yourself up to 14 days a year and have, you know, a board of directors meeting because the S Corporation legally can and should have a board of directors. So it can be yourself on the board. And so let's say you want to have a meeting with yourself and your team virtually, you can go to your, your living room and have a meeting with them and rent out the, the entire you know, your house to your the house to your business for the day and write up that deduction. And that's in addition to the home office deduction. And then see, I always, they try to scare me. Like if your office or your computer that you're writing off, isn't solely like if you do anything personal, you can get messed up. Like, is that just a stupid, silly fear or. Yeah. I mean, in, in general, right. Right now I'm in my home office. I might come here. I have a TV here. I might not, I might turn it on and be like, I'm about to watch some TV and this is my office. Right. My kids might come in here. You know, they're not, and it's not, there's no red tape on the door saying kids can't come in here and don't play with your toys. Right. <laughs> so it's essentially right. the, the, the idea is that you have a place that you primarily do work in is meant for work. But obviously, you know, if you are doing work in your living room or you're doing work in your kitchen, that's essentially a place meant for family, meant for cooking. That doesn't qualify as a home office, unfortunately. Okay. Got it. Got it. So I love that you told us that about the S Corp and the LLC and the NC. I love that. I love that. Okay. Next. What if you get a W-2 girl, and I've got a lot of these and hot moms. I mean, that's typically who we work with, just that higher level woman, six-figure gal. Um, mm-hmm. You know, one of them, she she went from making like 54K to 325K, and she's paying fucking so much <laughs> in taxes. So how does somebody, like, what would be a good tax shelter for her to keep more of her monies? So someone is making a W-2. So first off, I would go back to your employer and say, hey, is it possible you can pay me as a contractor? Is this an employee contractor relationship? Sometimes, um, not all, so sometimes a, a, a company, right, might pay as a W-2, but you actually are considered legally a contractor. It's just, that's just how they're used to doing things, right? But if you're, you know, in, in a business working with someone and you're not necessarily just working primarily for them, you're not necessarily on their schedule, you're on your own schedule, but you're helping them facilitate services, you might be able to negotiate with them to get a 1099 contractor um, status and then with that, you're able to file that income as a business and get more write-offs. So with the old tax law um, prior to Trump, President Trump coming into, or former President Trump coming into office, there's, there was what's called employee business expenses that you can claim in your tax return. So even those that had W-2s were able to claim, you know, um, any business miles, miles any business meals, um, even home office with the, as far as with your employer. But now that's no longer the case. In order to get those deductions, you need to actually have a business in order to claim those deductions. So I would say first, try and see if you can get it to 99 from your from your employer and be more so a contractor relationship versus an employee um, employer relationship. And on top of that, if you can't, I always tell everyone, start up a business, do something right. With COVID, we've seen that you can't necessarily rely on a job to produce income. You need to find another, find something you're passionate about and start with business in it, you know, or find something that is going to make you money. There's so many ways to make money now with the internet and now with a lot of courses and stuff readily available to us that there's literally no reason why you can't have a job and have some sort of side business on the side as well. And with that, you're able to, you know, use your car, 50% business, deduct, you know, your car expenses, deduct your home office, things that you couldn't do if you only had a W-2 with no job. I'm sorry, with no business. Hell yeah. Y'all hear what she's saying? She's saying you need to just get on here with hot moms and learn how to build a damn business with your your side hustle, with your natural gifts and talents. And that's what a lot of women are saying, but I don't have any of those. And I'm like, honey, (laughs) you went from 54K to 325 in a corporation. Do you think you can help them and learn how to get a seat at the table? Right. And they're like, yeah. And so we create, I help them. Hey, let's, I help them pull out that part of their themselves that's been hiding you know Mm. that we're scared to let come out and speak up and and get out there is the entrepreneur I mean it's scary you know this your husband he's an entrepreneur right yep yep so there's so there's two of you in the house yep (laughs) dear lord so you know know, it's 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 uh you gotta it's scary so that's what we do in hot moms we got a whole entire course uh just on business you know and how to uh, start from nothing and, and make money online. That that's what's up. You know, there's economy. What we create our own. So I love that. Yeah. So you're saying to keep your money. Cause I don't want to, uh, I don't like to say no taxes, no taxes. Like I look at taxes, like, Hey, 
we're paying the fire department, the police, the schools. I like that. But now mm-hmm. it does come down to a, hey, let's play offense here. I go Grant Cardone. Yeah. Let's play offense. Rich dad, poor dad. What yeah. is, hey, what's your, what's your opinion on uh, rich dad, poor dad, like the Robert Kiyosaki type thing? Mm-hmm. I'm all for it. Actually, once literally me and my husband got married um, six years ago, literally two weeks after we got married, we came back from a honeymoon. We literally went to a rich dad, poor dad conference and we we invested into it. And that's really helped us a lot. We have a real estate um, business that literally was born from all the resources we got from that. So I'm, I'm all for taxes, you know, Taxes are great, but we definitely don't have to overpay on them, right? And and aside from the taxes we pay when it comes to our income, we pay real estate taxes. We pay uh, taxes when you go to the grocery store and you pay buy your groceries. You pay taxes everywhere. When you literally buy a car, you're paying taxes. We pay taxes in so many different forms. It doesn't have to come from everywhere, you know? So I'm definitely all for paying as little tax to no tax as possible as far as when it comes to the income that I make, because I'm paying tax everywhere else. (laughs) we all need that enlightened witness in that area that we know nothing about to have our back. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like you've got that energy. I love it. That's why I'm going to be hitting you up. I'm going to probably become your client. Okay. I'm ready for you. I'm ready for you, Casey. (laughs) Hell yeah. I need, I need to know what's up. Okay. So you're saying if, if you're W2, I mean, if you're making 300 K and you're paying, you know, 20,000 a year, whatever, get a Mm -hmm. damn side hustle, start you an S corp LLC, whatever. And let's get yeah. making some money now. Hey, I did hear something back in the day. You know, I also work with a lot of uh, top earners with uh, multi-level marketing. And okay. I heard something back in the day that said, if you don't have, well, first of all, to write off like an, a network marketing company is a great way as a ta- it's a tax shelter. Yes or no? Yeah. So network marketing companies, um, I believe you get 10 and nine from them. So it's pretty much another way to, you know, great, make some great income, but necessarily a tax shelter per se. No, not necessarily. Okay. So it's a way to, to write it off and keep some of your money. So you're not paying in, but as far as tax shelter, I guess, what are the difference? Cause I'm, I'm ignorant when it comes to that. What's the difference? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So tax shelter is pretty much you putting your money into something that's helping to kind of shield from as far as taxes are concerned, but as far as network marketing, I mean, that's not necessarily a tax shelter per se, but that's a great way to help reduce taxes. So I guess to it's kind of like it's sheltering your money from taxes in a sense. Okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. But if it's so something, I don't know if this was a, a law or what, but if you're in MLM, you have to make a certain amount of money to consider, to be considered, I guess, to write off taxes. Is it like you have to make $200 or more a month? Like, do, is there any laws with that? Mm-hmm. No, you can literally have a loss in your business and still write off expenses. So you can start up a business, make money, have zero income because, you know, sometimes you have losses, you might have a loss or so in the first year or two and still write off income. So some people think that I can't file a business tax return until I make money, but that's not true because if you have losses, that actually helps offset even your, your W-2 income. Okay. Gotcha. So that's easy. And then as far as the W-2 girl, you need to do that. Okay. We've got that covered the MLM. Okay. Now some things, if you are a business owner, okay, we've Mm -hmm. got I think I, you, I shared something today on my Instagram, the, the limit weight limit for the, I can't even remember what the, te- what it's called, like the law, what it's called, the write off thing. Like if you got a Range Rover or the Mercedes. Okay. Or big yeah, truck. Bonus appreciation. yeah. Well, you expand on that. Tell us what it is and what qualifies. Yeah. So pretty much one of the items, the new tax law is really great is that if you have a vehicle that's 6,000 pounds or over, which is like what you said, you know, a G wagon or a Range Rover um, or large, a, another large Mercedes truck, as long as you're using it for at least 50% business, you can write off that portion on your taxes in that same year that you utilize it in your business. It can be a used car that you bought or a new car that you bought, as long as it's new to your business. So let's say this year I decided to buy a Range Rover and I use it for 100% business. Guess what? I'm writing off the entire cost, whether I paid cash or I financed it this year. And the great thing about it is that it, you know, it reduces your tax liability by a lot. Even if you're financing, obviously you're paying out over, you know, three to five years. Yeah. You can do that with leases too? Yep. You have a leases, the portion that you pay for the lease, be able to deduct it as long as you're utilizing it, like I said, at least 50% business, then you're able to take out the actual cost. Got it. Got it. So uh, what in your mind, well, I know you probably play with some big, some ballers. Like, let's just talk about like Dan Henry, you know, he's going to be on the podcast too. And and I think your husband works with Dan, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. And for those of you that don't know Dan, he's also my business coach. Um, he, he's, he's got the digital millionaire book, uh, phenomenal. Just he's that, he's that kid. Like you think of that's behind the computer. That's a fucking genius. And he's just, you know what I mean? It's just yeah, his, his brain, the way else. it works. <laughs> yeah. So somebody like him, I mean, making, I mean, he's had, he's had a million dollar months before. And mm-hmm. I think his, his tax person was like, you know, you could, you could, you could write off a $2 million yacht. Like, what do you like? If, okay. If you're an entrepreneur and you're making 300,000 to a million a month in mm-hmm. your mind, what are you like? Hey, you better be, you better have real estate. You better have, what are some things in Tala's mind that we need to have so that we keep some of our money? Yeah. Definitely. One of the key things you said is real estate. You need to buy assets, right? And you pretty much, you know, obviously don't go out there and buy stuff that you don't need, but put, buy stuff that's going to actually produce you money. You know, you talk about Dan Henry buying a yacht. I'm sure he can rent out that yacht, right? And produce income that way. He's inviting having business meetings on that yacht, making money that way. You know, if you're a, a, able to buy a private plane, you can use it to charter people and make money that way or use it, you know, as far as to help as far as your business branding. So real estate investment into other businesses. There's so many different businesses you can invest to and put seed money into, or even using that money to start up another business of your own. So there's so many things to, to buy, but I feel like the main thing is to buy assets that will produce you money or that will accentuate or help your business. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So uh, you mean, you know, real estate, we're t- talking rental, single family, multifamily, mm-hmm. uh, commercial, anything mm-hmm. real estate. Yeah. So real estate, I personally love commercial properties. Um, the main thing about commercial properties, let's say an apartment unit that has like you know, 10, 20, 100 units, that's really the best where to place to land your money, especially if you're talking about, you know, a million dollars plus, you definitely want to go tackle the bigger units. Um, and that way, you know, you have a property that you can just get property management on, on site versus single family here and there, and you have them scattered all over the place. So definitely commercial yeah, that's, that's, commercial properties is definitely the, the place to go. Um, and as far as doing rentals. Hell yeah, man. That's what, that's what I, that's my goal. I've, I just followed, I followed Grant for so long and he's got that in your, in his, it, he just puts it in your brain, like multifamily, 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 no singles, no singles. Yeah. Funny so to talk cool. about that. I actually was watching undercover billionaire yesterday. I'm getting caught up on season two. <laughs> Dude, his, his, uh. <laughs> His, uh, what do you call it? Like uh, behind the scenes is, it's hilarious hearing him talk about that show. He's a <laughs> nut, man. I love it. Hey, now here's something for the ladies. I told one of my other girls this. I'm like, look, bitch, you like coach bag. I mean, not coach bag, Chanel bags. So here's what you do. You get your business. You, you do the shoots, the branding, and can you can write off your Chanel bag. Is that true? Like, can you, what can you write off when it comes to that kind of stuff? Yeah. So when it comes to like clothing and stuff like that, Essentially, it's supposed to be something that you literally don't normally wear or can't wear it in, in your everyday life, right? So let's say you're, you're buying a, a, a huge like suit that you're going to use for a power meeting and literally you only use that suit for that meeting, then that's fine. But if you're, you're buying stuff that you're going to use on, on a regular or wear in your everyday, um, those things are not deductible. But if you're buying stuff that's really specifically only for your business, then you can write those things off. Hey, I could do that because seriously, I would have my little everyday bag. Okay. And then we've got our, our big bags for shoots and mm-hmm. photos. Yeah. And at that <laughs> point it would be considered a costume. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Y'all, Tala is telling us we can get <laughs> Chanel bags. Oh my God. Because they're it. like, come photo shoots and come these things. This is, you know, my different persona, a different person, but come every day. This is, you know, this is Tala. This is Casey on the Monday through Friday, Saturday. This is somebody else. <laughs> I love that. That's so motivating. You have no idea. Oh, so, okay. So what are some, what are some mistakes? Like if, if, if I, if you're looking at my stuff, um, what are some mistakes? Because I will tell you what I, what I'm not doing. Like I, I am, I right now am still in that old bad habit of using my business cards and these credit cards and all this shit Mm -hmm. versus paying myself and Mm -hmm. using that. So go ahead. Give me the lashing. (laughs) So first off, one of the hugest things I mistakes I see is mixing business with personal, right? As far as cards and everything. Here's why I say that's a no-no. I'm assuming you have an LLC. Is that correct? Uh, we got an S-Corp. That S-Corp. Okay. So the point of having these things like S-Corps and LLCs is to protect your personal assets, correct? 
you don't want to mix them together. So God forbid someone was to, you know, sue, sue you or sue a business. They're able to come after you personally because they're like, hey, the corporate bill is teared because you're using your personal, you're using the business funds for your personal stuff. So you and your business are actually one. So that's the first biggest thing that I always say is separate them because the point of having them separate is for you to, is to protect your personal stuff. You don't want someone to be able to go after your house, to be able to go after your assets. You want to them to only be able to go after your business and your business alone. So that's, that's the first thing. So do you, uh, you know, and that's what I hear people like, oh, I don't like credit cards. Those people typically I'm weeding them out of my, because to be in the, in the realm that we're in, you, you got to understand debt credit, yeah. is, credit cards. They're wonderful. And debt's a good thing. Like mm-hmm. Ramsey, I, I, I hear you, but bro, <laughs> like I, I'm not trying to be a broke, like live the best broke lifestyle ever. Cause it keeps you in mm-hmm. scarcity, right? So I yeah. love credit cards. I love you get them, you pay them off, you get points, you get all these perks yeah. and stuff. Leverage. Do you think it's leverage? There you go. So do you have a, a specific, um, way that you do things like putting certain things on this credit card or like, can you run us through mm-hmm. your flow of how you live and purchase? Yeah. So pretty much when it comes to those expenses, like the monthly, you know, the monthly Zoom costs, the monthly marketing costs, et cetera, those stuff, you know, I would put on American Express gold card, um, mainly because the points are, are really great. Right. And I put expenses that are, that are standard monthly expenses on that card and anything that's business related. I don't put anything personal on that card. Um, because th- my business isn't going to support those expenses, right? And when it comes to paying myself, I transfer money from my business account to my personal account to, to, to pay myself. And so anything, and anything as far as my, my business debit card, I pretty much only use it for expenses here and there, but I primarily like to use everything, run everything through the credit card and just pay it off monthly because like you said, the points are perks. And the great thing with points is that when you utilize them, you're not paying taxes on those points, Right. You're not paying taxes when you get those points for hotels and for flights. That's free money that you're getting. Like it's so, a no brainer. And that's a no brainer. Right exactly. Yeah. There's one right now I've got to get, and you can get free um Apple products. I'm like, dude, oh. as a business owner, Dan's got it. And it's in his group. I asked about it. Stephanie, um, Stephanie G in there, Gonzalez was telling me about it. But yeah, as a business owner, even, you know, you and your brand. We mm-hmm. get the card, we get points, and then we can run contests and give away like iPhones and iPads. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't even think about, about that. that. That's actually a great idea. Right? So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all about that. I'm trying to get the flight points. Doesn't it feel cool too when you want to go somewhere and you don't have to pay for flight? Yeah. And you didn't pay tax on that money too. So <laughs> it's a double yeah, win. Look at her. So what, what uh, when you worked for the IRS, tell us a little bit about what you liked and what you didn't like about it. Mm-hmm. What did I like? I liked all the things I learned, honestly, like the, the amount of stuff that I learned was invaluable. I always say it's it's best to learn on someone else's dime. Right. So I'm literally getting paid to learn and I'm utilizing what I learned and I got paid at the same time to now help people to now help business owners. So I definitely love that invaluable experience and kind of getting on the inside, seeing how the IRS does things. Right. Um, one of the things I didn't like was pretty much being the bad guy, you know, here's your tax bill. <laughs> here's how much you owe. It, so I, yeah, definitely didn't it, like that. So talking about the IRS thing. So, uh, I remember my dad, he got audited cause they, my mom and him got a divorce and she just wanted to like make his life miserable. But I've known <laughs> a lot of people to get audited. And I think even Dan got audited for something. He got in some trouble with Nike. I don't know what it was, but what's your, um, I've heard that if you get audited, don't trip, you can hire an attorney and actually pay way less. Like, can you just do a two minute spill a little bit? Like what's your knowledge on getting audited or ways yeah. around it? And yeah, here's the thing. If you currently have a business as follows the schedule C, you have the highest chances of getting audited. That's the first thing. So you're already a step above as far as limiting the amount, the chances that you get audited if you have an S corp or a C corporation or a partnership. And mind you, 80 to 9% of businesses in this country are Schedule Cs. Second thing, when you paper file your return, that's actually better for you than electronically filing. Chances are also a little bit lower that you're going to get audited. Now, I always hear this thing about how, like, oh, I don't want to claim all my expenses. I don't want to pull red flags, et cetera. I'm like, hey, Claim everything. Don't give the government more money just because you're scared of getting audited. As long as you actually have legitimate business expenses, deduct them. You know, God forbid you get audited. As long as you know you're not 
putting phony things on there and not underporting your income, you're good to go. I've, I've, you, I've audited people and I've also represented people that have came away owing nothing because everything was done correctly. So as long as you have your ducks in a row, like you said, you can hire a CPA such as myself um, to represent you in the case of an audit. And that way you actually don't even have to, you can see the IRS face to face or deal with it if that's a, a source of anxiety or stress for you. Um, I would also say, don't be scared of the IRS. What's the worst thing that can happen? It's money, right? Obviously you wanna do things to avoid having to pay extra, definitely keep all your receipts. Also a side note, you know, your American Express statement is not a receipt. The IRS is not gonna, is not having that. So you need to actually keep regular, you need to actually keep the receipts of the, of the stores you went to. Things like Amazon, this see, this see Amazon, your American Express statement, that doesn't mean anything, right? You can buy anything on Amazon. So keep all your receipts and don't get scared of the IRS. I, I will never forget, um, I audited someone that was like, my worst fear was that I'll get out about the IRS and there I was, right? When you start to fear things, they manifest in your life. Don't fear the IRS because you might get a call from them. <laughs> so amen to that. Um, now that's something that I quit doing was receipts. And because for some reason I did, I thought credit card statements would be all I needed. Mm. And um, recently there's this little app that I use. I'm tired of that. But so do you like the apps that um, you can take a picture of the receipts or like, is there any hacks on that? Yeah. Like, yeah. So that's perfect. Like, like me personally, I, I love electronic receipts. The majority of the stuff I buy, I don't necessarily really go to stores to buy anything for my business, but a lot of stores now you can put in your email. So there's very few physical receipts that I even really get. I buy a lot of stuff online. So I'm just literally keeping those PDF copies and folders. But if you have physical receipts, yeah, literally the, all those apps that you just take a picture and store them on your phone and then upload them on your, your computer are perfect. Okay. But and, you definitely uh, need those receipts. Okay. Okay. And um, I heard something, if you don't have to keep things, if it's 10 years old, like if they're anything 10 years, you can just throw out, what, what's that rule? Yep. So essentially the idea behind that is that there's only a certain amount of years the IRS can go back and audit you. Right. So pretty much it's typically three years. That's if you filed your tax return on time, but we always say pretty much keep your receipts for at least five to seven years. It's really actually really seven years. And the reason why it's even that much amount of time is that if you get, if, if your audit is considered fraud, fraud, you can go back five years versus the three years. And these like people that don't pay their taxes and they end up in, in like trouble. Is that when they say that, are they, are they saying that they don't even report, like they don't even do their damn taxes or are they saying that they do their taxes? They just don't pay them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So two things, a lot, some people literally <laughs> have businesses and make money and don't even file tax returns. That's the first thing. I mean, some people literally, I don't know how they fly under the radar. They, there are people that haven't filed tax returns in 10 years. <laughs> that, um, how do they, I don't understand. Like that's, I don't, I don't even understand that type of th thinking. Like, I, do you, what the <laughs> hell? I don't even, I don't understand how you live life without having a tax return. You need a tax return to like do stuff. So I guess they're, they don't have any real estate. Those type of people, I guess, or they're paying cash, whichever one, but you need, you know, and so you, you need your taxes to do a lot of things. So I don't understand that, but yeah, so a lot of people are either not filing or just grossly, you know, under reporting or over reporting things. Uh, and how long have you been in, in the game? So I've been an accountant for the past 10 years now. Um, I was with the IRS for six years auditing business returns, um, businesses that had up to $5 million in, um, in income. And then from there transitioned to having my own practice. So now, you know, I'm, a, I'm on the other side of the IRS helping businesses. <laughs> And that's, you know, me talking about your energy, you have the energy of an attorney. That's what it is. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Have anybody ever told like you that? that? No, never, I never, I've never been told that, but that's actually surprisingly one of the things I actually wanted to do, you know, grant, like, what do I want to do? When I was in college, I actually considered, you know, doing law school, but after the, the first year, I was like, I, I think I'm good with numbers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You just have that, you have that energy and it's almost like, that's what you're doing. You're going to bat for us. And um, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's cool. That, that, that makes sense. I'm like, I'm glad they told me attorney. So that's, that's mm -hmm. so, um, so what was your transition like going from, you know, employer to CEO? Yeah. So pretty much it, I told myself when I started working that once I had my first child, I did not want to work anymore. My job with the IRS is actually very 
it wasn't tedious at all. I actually only had to go into the office two times a month, right? So that's nothing. And, you know, um, just go on audits, obviously, as well. But I can, as, as long as I wasn't out on the client site, I was at home. But I told myself, once I have a child, I want to be at home. You know, I grew up with entrepreneur parents that they were always accessible. I actually didn't know what a, what a nine to five was until high school, literally. So I always wanted to have that same accessibility and availability for my children. So pretty much transitioned as soon as I had my first son, um, uh, you know, I got pregnant with him five years, uh, five years ago was like, okay, I think it's time for me to roll out and, you know, start my own business. So that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I love it. And how did you find, how did you find clients? Yeah. So I actually invested. I was, I'm big on investing in courses, investing in yourself, investing in your business. So I invested in a course to learn about how to start up a CPA company because I did not know how to do that. So I invested in a course that taught, that taught you pretty much how to go out and get clients and how to market um, and how to build a CPA practice. And so that's what I did as far as, you know, online marketing, um, you know, Instagram, Facebook, emails, um, everything. And then also of course, network. Hey, your Instagram, it's good. I, like, I was impressed. I was like, oh, I love this. Um, oh, and you. we talked about on the phone. Welcome. And uh, you were, you're big into investing back. Now let's go there. You know, mm-hmm. when people work for me, Hot Moms Lifestyle Coaching, uh, it's like, it's one of my highest, higher level coaching because you get, you work with me, you work with the guru. It's, you know, access to everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've got our courses. But when people work with me, some people, they've never invested in themselves. Maybe they've gone to college. <laughs> They've never invested like this. So it's really scary. Entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. they're like, where do I put my credit card information? Right. Let's get it. <laughs> yeah. So, but for these other people, um, now I have heard a lot of shit I, like, oh, you can write off up to 5,000 a year. I, I call bullshit. I'm like, you know, corporations are paying more for people to come in and help their people. So mm-hmm. how much can you write off? Like I'm considered, I think we're considered now a consulting company because okay. we do like that's, that's what we do. So how can someone write off like paying to work with me, even though it's health and fitness, but really we help them build businesses, get clients, make money. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So first off, start a business, right? If you're an, an employee, you know, the, the, the cards are stacked against you. So start up a business. So, so if this is how you want to start a business, as far as, you know, getting into, you know, the course, as far as learning how to start a business, that's the first, the first step, right? So once you invest into that and you're able to deduct it, you know, the first year, as far as, you know, startup cost, or if it's, if you're actually starting up the business that year and actually have the wheels moving, you can deduct more than just the, the, that $5,000 in that first year. Um, as long as the business is already operational. So can you do yearly? Like if, cause I pay mentors every year and I think I will until I just am ready to tap out because I love to learn. I'm always Mm -hmm. like, you know, even Tiger Woods, man, he still has a coach. He still goes in his golf lessons. Yeah. That, the person that's successful knows there's always something to learn. Yeah. Yeah. So can I, can I write off my coaches every year and can I write off your services? Like, how does that work? Oh yeah. So every single year, like that's the thing that you said is key to be successful. You literally have to always constantly be learning, constantly investing in yourself. So every single year, every single coach, every single course that you're purchasing every single year, you can write them off, right? There's no cap on that. There's never a cap on learning. So every single year, you're able to write that off. Um, same thing with, you know, CPA services. You're able to write that off as well, legal and professional expenses. So same thing as far as what you offer with helping women, that would be in a professional expense to write off on your taxes. Okay. got it. Now, what if they're W-2 though? Are they kind of screwed? Yeah, you're, you're kind of screwed. That's yeah. why I would say, even if you're W-2, go start something. Like, you know, if you're, if you're like, hey, I want to have a side business, you know, invest, you know, you, you say you, you help women as far as building up businesses. So invest in that and start up a business, learn about what you can do. A lot of the online stuff to make money, you know, in this 2021, there's no reason why you have to leave your home to start a business. All you need is Wi-Fi and a computer. The energy in this, in this podcast, I wonder how many women are going to reach out or wonder how many women are going to start their own shit. Cause it's like, you're sitting there going, I hope it's- so. I always encourage women to start up something. I love it. I know. I love, I'm, I'm glad that we got to chat, you know, in Dan's group, when I posted like, Hey, Where's the hotshot CPAs? Because his group's such a high level, you know, of entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And when uh, your hubby reached out and told me about you, I'm like, yes, a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Not no dissing the guys at all, but I just mm-hmm. like to say I love um, supporting women. I mean, yeah. period. I support men all day. I've got love for everybody. It's it's an energy thing, but I just love seeing a woman, especially a mom out there, and 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 make it happen. That's some cool shit. I know, right? Definitely. <laughs> I heard one more thing. I want to get your 
you're backing on. Um, when I was in the MLM back in the day, they were like, here's the stats. If you're a W-2, you're working for the IRS from January to May. Like that's how much you're going to pay of your check. So typically it's like not getting a paycheck until May. Everything you make after May, typically you can keep it. That's how much money you're just looking at it. Like a 30,000 foot view is what you're paying the IRS. If you don't have an S corp or something like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Because you're paying about, you know, 25 to 40% of taxes every single year. So just off the, off the top, I mean, even before you see the money, the IRS has already got their money, right? <laughs> if you're an employee. Mm. So the price of the price owner, of you pay yourself first. There you go. You know, the price of security, you're going to pay mm. for it. Yep. <laughs> That's so true. That's so true. It's like, you know, it's like being with that old, nasty, wrinkly balls, old, <laughs> bald head man for security, for money. You know, it's like, you got to yeah. lay with it every night, but you're safe, but you're not yeah. happy. But you're safe financially. It's like, girl, you can make your own money. I just yeah. got this. I just got this picture. It's going to go up in a hot pink frame. Uh, and it says, I am a rich man. Oh, snap. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And the thing is, like, is it really even security anymore? I mean, we've seen what something like COVID could do. I mean, a job is not necessarily secure, you know, this day and age. It's you always have to find a way to start making a living for yourself. Um, even if yeah. even if you just transition, you know, like I said, get get a side, a side business and you know, help it get to the point that you can leave your job because I mean, I don't think any job is secure. You know, and that's where I teach. I teach in hot moms, like, yeah, we're we're health, fitness, hormones, and shit like that, but our other our life coaching is uh we help women increase their skill set because I say, you know what? You can take away my job ti talks about this in his song you can take uh -huh. it away and I'm, I'm still it i can build it back like like undercover yeah. mi millionaire billionaire yes. whatever if you have you can build your skill set nobody can take that it's like a degree uh -huh. nobody yeah. can take that away you can you can we can lose a job guess what we know how to get one monday we yep. can take, get a, a client we can get two more the next day because we yep. have a skill set yeah. And I was just reading a quote from Warren Buffett. He was talking about, you know, the more that you learn, the more you earn. Done. Let's just drop. Let's just end it with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just pretty much, you know, if you're interested in getting services as far as a CPA that to help you put more money in your pocket, definitely reach out. Um, you know, my Instagram is at tall underscore wealth. I have a lot of resources on there. Um, and my website is highlevelcpa.com. I take free 15 minute consultations to kind of help strategize your business and taxes. So feel free to reach out. Now, do we, do we pay you? Is it a monthly thing, a yearly thing, or as, as, as you do the work thing? Yeah. So I have clients that all they literally need is tax taxes done. They aren't necessarily at the point that they need someone in the business monthly, but then I also have clients that need CFO services. So with them, I work with them on a monthly basis. Oh gosh. Now how much money are they making to need a CFO? They're definitely at least that, you know, six figures, maybe uh around two fifty to five hundred thousand to oh, a million. Oh, I'm thinking more than that. Okay, shit. So okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because I always say, you know, when it comes to your business, if you're trying to scale, you need to have someone that's worried about the money so you can work on the business and not in it. Well, then I need to go ahead and get signed up with you then. Now, let me, so let me tell y'all um, how to spell her, her, the handle. It's, it's Tala, but it's spelled T-O-L-A underscore wealth. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, highlevelcpa.com. Go on there, fill it out, book a call with her. I'm definitely going to book a call with her. Um, I think that it's important that we have each other's backs. And yeah. yeah, like she said, it's one less thing that we need to worry about because you know this too, Tala, when you do, you are a professional at what you do. You are not a professional at what I do at hormones. Yeah. You, you don't, you don't need to worry yourself about how to do this and how to think and how to do your hormones and how to get healthy. Hire that shit out. So you can yeah. keep doing what you're good at. Exactly. Stay in your lane. <laughs> there you go, man. That's like secret number one. Everybody trying to figure things out on their own. I'm like, dude, you could just pay somebody that already could tell you the answer and you could get there way faster. Yeah, exactly. Waste less so. time. No shit. Hey, I appreciate your time. Um, for real, it was just nugget after nugget. Uh, I will be putting this up and comment, like, subscribe, go follow her, let her know that you watch this. Um, and that's pretty much it. Any final words, Tala? Go get this money. <laughs> Let's all go get this money, ladies, whether it's building the business, saving on taxes. There's so many ways to put more money in our pockets. Hashtag go get this money. Love it. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All right. 
See you. Yeah, later. thanks so much for having me, Casey. Bye bye.